of almost 350 rand year on year. So the cost of basic foods are going up exponentially. And you've got to start wondering, how does someone who relies on the SASA grant or relies on the COVID-19 relief uh, grant as well, how do they even try and afford something like this? Mervyn Abrams from uh, the organization uh, that is looking at uh, the Economic Justice and Dignity Group uh, from Peter Maritzburg joining us this morning. Mervyn, always good to have you on. It feels like a monthly chat and every time you and I have a discussion, uh, we need to start paying more money to simply buy food. Why has it gotten so uh, exponentially bad? There's a lot of factors, but what's the number one factor for you? Good morning, Gareth, and good morning to all your viewers. Of course, uh, the main factors are, in fact, <coughs> global geopolitical factors. So some of the main factors are the massive increases we've seen in the oil price. Uh, so the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine has kind of meant that wheat and sunflower is no longer freely available on the market, or at least there is so much less. And, and Indonesia has just banned the export of all their palm oil, which means that there is less vegetable oil on the global markets. And that, of course, is impacting on South African uh, food prices because wheat, oil, uh, soya are also inputs into other things, like, for instance, poloni. So 2.5 kg poloni has increased according to our index by 31% year on year. So there is a massive knock-on effect uh, of this uh, uh, on various different kinds of foods. Mervyn, I'm going to ask you to uh, pick one of the options for me. I'm sure you would have heard uh, just before we came to you what we're asking on our website this morning, enc.com. It's our viewer question. If you didn't hear it, let me just remind viewers, so the food basket increasing by 340 rand. We've got four options. You tell me which one you think most South Africans will vote for and maybe which one even you will vote for. Option one, this is unaffordable. Option two, I can absorb the cost. Option three, we need government to intervene. That's option three. And option four, retailers offer, should offer more discounts. Which of those in your mind, Mervyn Abrams, uh, seems like the more realistic option? Gary, that's quite difficult. I would go for the last two. Um, I would say that retailers can assist consumers and retailers are in fact doing that. Um, and we welcome that. Uh, but during COVID, we had seen massive increases in the profits of most of our retail stores. And so our appeal is for, for retailers to continue to support uh, by keeping some prices low and offering discounts and combos, which many of them are already doing. And then also the government has to step in in terms of social security. We have to ensure that households are able to achieve uh, at least sufficient access to food because if we don't do that, we will pay for it in other ways. We will pay for it in lower educational outcomes. We will pay for it in terms of higher uh, disease uh, burden in the country. And we will pay for it eventually in lower economic growth and productivity. So it is essential that the social grants be kept in place. Uh, Mervyn, the network is starting to go a little bit on us here, but let me maybe leave this as my last question. Hopefully you're able to hear me clearly. So when it comes to uh, the retailers, I'm curious about this. Uh, when we look at their profit margins, is there room to negotiate there? Because obviously we have retailers that are cutting their prices. We see the daily specials. But in your understanding, is there more that can be cut from the profit of retailers, A? And then B, is that fair to ask retailers to cut into their profits? So, Gareth, essentially what we are asking for is for them to plow back some of their profits to the very community that, that are the loyal customers. Um, so in times of crises, many businesses understand that, uh, of course, we don't ask them to, to, to go into debt. Mm. Um, but we are asking them to give of their profits uh, to keep prices low because that also builds their brand and of course it builds their lawyer customer base going forward when times do get better and it will get better in perhaps two or three years time. And the problem is, I was about to say, how long do you think this could go on, 
uh, this sort of exponential increase. But two, three years' time, that's a, a very long time for some families, Mervyn. And I want you to try and help viewers understand uh, the kind of poverty line we are talking about. I mentioned uh, when I was coming across to you now that 350 is essentially a, so a COVID-19 grant or it's a SASA grant as well. So that money might have been helpful a couple of years ago, but essentially now any grant given is barely covering this food basket. We're talking about people literally uh, living on the bread line if they can even afford the bread. Well, essentially, exactly, Gareth. That is where we are going. And the reason why it will potentially stay high for at least another year or two um, is at its highest it's ever been. Mm. So it's a global issue that is also impacting on South Africa. It's not only a South African issue. Um, and therefore, the social grants must be kept in place. One figure that is important to remember is that Stats SA and the Treasury is setting the food poverty line at 624 rand per person. So each person in a household should at least have that only for food. Mm. And that presumes that we, we, we have in a household of four at least three, over 3,000 rand coming in. It's an astonishingly low number. As you and I are talking, I'm just trying to imagine how a family and an individual can even get by on 624 rand. And here we are trying to discuss how we can make it more affordable to simply buy uh, the basic foods. Uh, Mervyn, I really appreciate you speaking to us this morning, always giving such clarity, doesn't he, uh, on just how serious this is. And that is why uh, it is the Economic Justice and Dignity Group uh, program head from Peter Maritzburg for us this morning. Mervyn Abrams just giving a sense of what it's like to try and survive on the breadline in this country. It's not going to get any cheaper, any easier, any time soon.